Yvonne, why are you doing that? The notice said full marching order. What the notice says and what you do, our horses in two different stables. But the order was signed by the commandant. Eh, the commandant. Whenever he sees a piece of paper, he's got to sign it. Confidentially. You know what that order means? It means that you'll stand up in the sun for three hours. The sweat will pour off your face. The flies will eat you. You'll get so tired that you'll faint. But they'll stand you up. And you'll faint again. And they'll stand you up. Up, down, down, up, up, down. I'm getting busy with your ups and downs. Well, then what's it all for if we're not going to march? Discipline. You'll see those old timers? They never take a full pack on a parade. Well, I'm going to play safe. I'll take a full pack. A full water bottle. I bet you faint, I bet you. Well, do we understand the orders? Full pack and equipment ready to march? Yes, sir. Are they ready to march? Yes, sir. Then march. March? To Manchuria. Now, sir? Oh, but it's 40 kilometers. It is, and a bit more. The relief company, sir, hasn't arrived yet. Since when did the Legion wait for relief? They had their full water bottles. They had their heart tank. If they haven't, heaven help them. They can't play tricks on me. The orders were for the company to parade ready to march. The 14th company will now march. Now I bet you faint. Right shoulder! Arms! Where's the right? I was not only thinking of my poor father, I was thinking a little of you. <laughs> That's good. Oh, you don't believe me? Why did you send the 14th away before the relief arrived, eh? To discipline them, that's why. There's a lot of recruits among them, and they have to learn. Perhaps you make a little mistake, mon commandant. What's that? 
Suppose something should happen. Suppose the Arab should attack and the relief should never arrive. What would your colonel say, mon commandant? Now, you march them away to thank them. Well, you have. Now bring them back and I'll thank them too. No. No? No. It's a big no. Now, yet yeah, you say you love me. You say you love me, and when I ask you such a little thing, you say no. Oh, now, Belle. Look here. Nothing will refuse you anything in reason. Well, you have been kind. Yes, and patient, too. You keep putting me off with promises and promises. But you will soon be a colonel. Oh, you said major when I was a captain. Did I? <laughs> oh, you are so funny. <laughs> oh, you little devil. Sometimes I think you're just a... I don't know how to take you. Do you love me or don't you? <laughs> Answer me. Oh, oh, so very, very much. And when you are a colonel, I shall love you much more. And, and what? And now, will you bring the men back? No! Oh, my arm, you help me! Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, there. Sure, and I'll buy you a bracelet. No, oh, right. bracelet will not make it well. What will it get to it? No, no. Now, you send for your soldiers, and when they come back, I'll kiss you. Like that. Cigarette, come back here. Morning. Yes, sir. Tell the admin to send a message to the Fourteenth Company in order to make barracks. You hear me? Jump! Major Doyle, what do you mean by sending the Fourteenth Company away before the relief is in? Hmm? Discipline is one thing, common sense another. Order them back at once. I've done so already, sir. But you marched them all. I did, sir. To let them eat dust and sweat a bit. Then I recall them. You'd never know in that desert what had happened to the relief. It's amazing. I just had a report that City Ben Yusuf has attacked the 17th Company. Cut them to bits. The entire convoy destroyed. Did you know that? No, sir. I took ordinary military precautions. That's all, sir. Very good, Major. Take a troop of chasseurs. Get out there. There may still be some of them alive. Very good, sir. Orderly! <laughs> Watch it, poor devil. Bare head, sun, food and water just out of reach. City Ben Yusuf never forgets the detail. It must have been a complete wipeout if they had time to do that sort of thing. That is those your last meal on earth. Uh, Baron, better go and relieve number four, will you? Grievon, Moose, get up on the hill. Those fellows deserve a meal, too. Who do you think you are, eh, General? I am the very model of a modern Major General. Come on, there's a good fellow. All right, Corporal. Hey, Corporal, try a bit of this. Oh, patty de foie gras. I'm wine, too. I don't suppose the Colonel will ever invite me to dinner, so I'll dine with him now. <laughs> I hope the Colonel won't mind. <laughs> I hope the Colonel won't know. 
You can always blame it on the Arabs anyway. <laughs> I say, Corporal, send the head waiter, will you? You've never seen a head waiter in your life. Well, that leaves plenty of us. How are you feeling? No complaint. Food's all right, but I don't like these beds. Well, why don't you ring to the chambermaid? Ha! <laughs> I never thought of that. Well, Rick, how about a drop of this? My head's whizzing so I, I can't tell whether it's my old mother or the angel singing me to sleep. Chateau Latour, 75. Never thought I'd see that again. That makes you think of home and mother, don't it, sir? Home? Stand to get your post. <laughs> Hold your fire! What all of you parade inspection? Come, people. All in the company! Company! Good! The 17th company, sir. Sentries posted. The one on the point and one on the hill. Where's your machine gun? Uh, uh, trained on your back, sir. Name? Victor, sir. Well done, Corporal. Thank you, sir. Oh, 
that's you. <laughs> Charming evening and the entertainment. Don't move. I'll give you entertainment. Don't move. Your cutlery. Have you arrested? He tried to murder me in my own cafe. In my own cafe. And that damn body. Get out. Get out and never come back. Get out. The thing's delayed us protest too much. She's screaming, get out. She really means, oh, do come back, unless I'm much mistaken. <laughs> amusing, what? <laughs> I say, is it amusing? Yeah, yeah, very funny. Sergeant Victor reporting, sir. You speak Arabic, Sergeant. Oh, fairly well. You know the dialects of the southern tribe? The Oglis and Berbers, for instance? Well enough to swear at the men and be polite to the women. <laughs> well, I have a very important assignment for you. Some dealers have arrived from the far desert. New ones. Go down to the marketplace and keep your ears open. For what purpose? Any talk of Sidi Ben Yusuf? Any hint of his collection in his tribe? What name? Sidi Ben Yusuf. I see, yes. But we are wise in the place. I'm the the not Arabs. <laughs> Here is a good one, mon capitaine. Huh? Look, look. Ah, that's better. Now, that's a horse, that is. By oh, George, that's, that's a horse. <laughs> I say, what, what's the price? This harbor demands 2,000 francs. But uh, I will get it for you for 1,500. Good. Splendid. I'll take it. I say, they haven't got another like it, have they? To make a good pair for the general. It's here as Sir Guaragalo Maratani. Harder it. He has one, more Capitan. He will get him at once. No, you see those dealers over there? They would have robbed you if I was not here. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> Same horse, different saddle. <laughs> That's an old trick she's playing. More Capitan, look. Splendid! A perfect match! A half-brother to the other one. Is it not so good as the first one, of course? Oh, but... Oh, no, no, it isn't. Any fool with half an eye can see that, so I'll, I'll take it. And that rake is a pretty swindle. But don't you think you ought to tell him so? I mean, I'll... Now, now show me what else they've got. Turn them along. Two at a time. I'll attend to it myself, look at the Ah, And tomorrow and you'll have it. Have what? The one-horse solo string. Ah, yeah. oh, it's you, is it? Hi, Sergeant. Good afternoon, sir. Learning about horses? Oh, a little. Good horse at last one. As you said, sir, quite extraordinary. The chap's got to keep his wits about him with these Arabs. Turn you back for one minute and they'll swindle you. <laughs> ah, bonjour, mademoiselle. Bonjour. Mon capitaine, here are the other horses. Which horse do you like the best, Sergeant? I rather fancy the black, don't you? If you want my opinion, I'd take the chestnut. The black's a bit weak in the foreleg. What's that? What would a legionnaire know about horses? 
You can take my word, mon capitaine. I know. Well, well, there's one way to prove that the black is the best. I will ride him and the boy will ride the other. We'll race for you, huh? That's a good idea. That'll show us, won't it? Well, it's not a bad idea, but... Supposing I ride the chestnut. You see, the Arab boy might be inclined to think that someone wants you to buy the black. What you say? I see. Splendid, Sergeant, splendid. <laughs> that is, if, if Mademoiselle doesn't mind. No, of course she won't. I say, you know, you two ought to have a bet on this. What about a bottle of wine to a kiss? A bottle of wine to a kiss? Well, the, the wage is hardly fair, but I am willing. What about you, Mademoiselle? I bet. Although it would kill me to pay. <laughs> this ought to be fun. Let's give us a bet. <laughs> I remember, this is a bending race. Official Jim Carner rules. In and out of the poles on the way, and straight down on the way home. Knock over one pole, and you lose the race. Now, are you ready? Go! <laughs> Somewhere, I think. A groom? What, him? Quite <laughs> a brilliant race, <laughs> Sergeant. Now you can collect. Make the little lady pay. Perhaps the lady doesn't care to pay. After all, the horse won. Why not compromise and let her kiss the horse? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I didn't... Come on. <laughs> I say, I say. There's a woman for you. She's welched on him. Stop! Please stop! Go away! But I want to talk to you. Go away! You will stop. Are you hurt? Oh, it's pretty good to be done, Tree. Why don't you leave horses alone if you cannot drive? You want to break my neck? No, I, I wouldn't want to break that pretty little neck. Oh, I hate you. Oh, I don't blame you, and I'm terribly sorry. Sorry? Yes, that's why I dashed after you. I didn't mean to offend you. No? The first time you come to my cafe, you insult me? And the next time you see me, you tell me to kiss a horse. <laughs> well, after all, you, you did tell me it would kill you to pay the bet. And I wanted to let you off, and I just said the first thing that came into my head. Forgive me. Please do. Are you really sorry? Of course I am. And you have forgiven me, haven't you? Would it have killed you if I had paid my bet? I should say not. <laughs> you like that? Like it? Who wouldn't? I only wish that we'd bet some more. <laughs> but we did. Five, six, ten, ten <laughs> bets. <laughs> And you won every time. One. <laughs> the bet was a bottle of wine to a kiss. My idea, you know. The sergeant won by a nose. Rides like a cavalryman began. But when they came to pay, he told us she'd better kiss the horse. <laughs> That's carrying indifference a shade too far, if you ask me. Go on, what happened? 
She rode off as if the devil were after. The sergeant followed. I don't know why. Well, they're a long time coming back. We yeah, I'd be slow myself if I were the sergeant. I say. <laughs> I wonder if she kissed the horse after all. <laughs> hate a man so much and love him so quick. What a funny little creature you are, Cigarette. Oh, retreat. Come on. No horses, a long walk. Now I suppose I've got to carry you. What? Carry me? <laughs> This is not the first time I've walked in the desert. I've marched with the Légion. You have? Then march. An order for the barracks. When Sergeant Victor arrives, turn the report to me at once. Sergeant Victor is at your office, sir. He's been waiting there for over an hour. Well, what are you doing here? You came to make my report, sir. Report? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, uh, did you find out anything? Nothing definite. But I got the impression that there is something afoot. Hmm. Well, uh, uh, what do you say? I said I got the impression that there is something afoot. Oh. Hmm. Thank you, Sergeant. Is that all, sir? Sergeant, did uh, you, uh, did anything else of importance happen this afternoon? No, no. Oh, nothing of a military nature. Oh. I see. Thank you, Sergeant. Sir. May I present Lieutenant de la Brosse? How do you do? To meet you, mademoiselle. It's like coming to an oasis in the desert. Oh, thank you, monsieur. But you can't believe everything you see on the desert, you know. Maybe in the mirage. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your lordship, the commissioner? Coming, old boy. Coming in a few days. Official reason to pick up his niece, the Lady Venetia. Is that his niece over there? <laughs> Charming girl. Better cultivate her, Major. Good politics. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same. Introduce me, will you? Huh? Oh, delighted. <laughs> Pardon me, Colonel Pearl. <laughs> Lady Venetia, may I introduce Major Doyle? The only Britisher with a command south of Algiers. Well, how do you do, Major Doyle? No doubt you want to see everything of the Legion while you're here. So you must see the best battalion first. Yours, Major? <laughs> it is that, if I say it myself. How nice. I'm sure Lady Venetia will be happy to, sometime in the future, no doubt. Oh, no, no, no. I'd love to see your battalion, Major Doyle. At your convenience, my lady. And I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Carl's been kind of delicate like, haven't you, sir? His leg, I mean. Oh, perhaps I have. He'd have broken a foreleg with bone like that the day he hit that wall at Aintree. Aintree? Yes, he nearly touched me that day, didn't he? Not you, sir, with your seat. You steadied him up like a bit of all right, sir. Mm, he had a great heart, that fellow. Biggest inning. Attention! Commandant going round. You'd think now these legionnaires would be a lot of dear and cutthroats, but you'd be wrong. My lot of fighters. 
No fools. A lot of fine fellas among them. Of course, it depends entirely on the commoners who fix them. <laughs> Obviously a credit to you, Major Doyle. Well, if I do say myself, I pick men with initiative. I do hope they won't mind my coming in. Mind? Oh, they'll be honored. Come this way. They must be tortured by the flies. Often they have screens in their quarters. Screens, is it? They said of the legion that when a fly bites a legionnaire, the fly dies. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a nuts of a fellow over there. He does the most delicate of work. Ah, that's clever, isn't it? Oh. How interesting. Do they sell these things? They do so. How else could they get drunk once in a while on a two and a half a day? <laughs> Thank you so much. It's come this way. It's my contention, and Napoleon thought so too. The sergeant to the backbone of the army. Now, uh, here's a fellow. Just made him a sergeant. How do you do? He showed initiative in a brush with the Arabs the other day. English, of course. Looked up his record. His legion record, I mean. Nothing to be ashamed of there, at any rate. Your work, sergeant? Uh, my <laughs> recreation. What a beautiful piece of corn. What's this? A likely looking beast. Perfect model of a thoroughbred English hunter. An English hunter, is it? A lot he'd know about those. He sees nothing but Arab ponies around these parts. It might have been called from... a memory? Oh, not likely, I should say. And that's treading on dangerous ground, my lady. We must never look into their path. Excuse me. He's rather like a bull in a china shop, isn't he? I'm glad you like my, my horse. I think it's lovely. You like it? Well, I'll buy it for you. Oh, but I couldn't. Why not? Sure, everything's for sale around here. Your sergeant's a franc. A week's pay. Oh, no, 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 thank you, Major Doyle. I really couldn't think of it. I know the sergeant doesn't really want to part with it. Just as you say, my lady. Keep the franks, sergeant. Adi! He gave me the creeps the way you looked at her. For a moment, I thought it was someone who knew you. <laughs> Seeing a lady like that again. Makes a man feel sort of homesick, doesn't it, sir? It does. a very distinguished guest with me. She's my cousin. What? Well, she's my second cousin. You see, she's related to, uh, to Princess Cherubini. She just got in on a, on a camel train and we've got family uh, first with cats. <laughs> go on, go on. I told you this place is reserved. Ah, the commandant is coming, eh? No, no. He's not coming? No. I'm not moving. You'll move. You'll move for Sergeant Victor. Ah! Sir Jean Victor, <laughs> I see you want to poison him with this, eh? Oh, go on, go away. I bet you ten sous. I, I bet you twenty sous he doesn't come. Uh, that's one bet I'll take. <laughs> now you and your <laughs> princess, my apologies. Go and we join the common people. <laughs>
Going out again? Why not? I have a late pass and the night is young. Oh, yes. There's the ball over the hotel. You're going, of course. Oh, I may drop in. <laughs> I don't think. Permit me, sir. Your hat. Yeah, thank you, Ray. Your cane, sir. Yeah, thank you again. Should I wait up for you, sir? No, I may be a trifle late. Just leave a uh, whiskey and soda on the sideboard and a few sandwiches. Oh, yes. Had it of course. Well, I think you've been very charming about the whole thing. Oh, not at all. I think it's great fun. Huh. Yes, it's just warm. <laughs> Urgent message for Colonel Farrell from headquarters. The sergeant. This man has message magic for Colonel Farrell. Very urgent. Don't keep us waiting. Very well, sergeant. Follow me. Come on, man. Do as you're told. Wait here. Wait here. You know my uncle. He likes to surprise him. Yes, sir. But he does. You know, I'll... Important dispatches just arrived, sir. For Colonel Farrell. From headquarters? Oh, quite possible, sir. I'm afraid I must go. You coming in, Lady Venetia? No. No, I'll wait here for you. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, excuse me. Need I apologize? Was there any such message? Oh, yes. Yes, but I didn't bring it. Is it dangerous for you to be here? Twice dangerous. Twice? Confined to barracks on the one side and on the other. Those eyes of yours. You're a daring man, Sergeant. Well, I had to come to bring you this. You were kind enough to admire it. I wouldn't sell it. I would never sell it. And with a third party present, it was impossible to give it. Will you please accept it? Thank you. I love it. Not only for itself, but because you risked so much to bring it. Do you know this is the first exciting thing that's happened to me in all this monotonous country? Africa, monotonous. Isn't it? Well, this isn't Africa. It's just a hotel in any part of the world. Africa's out there. The Arab quarters, the Jewish bazaars, the cafes, the cabille dancers. Things I've always wanted to see. Things you ought to see if you want to see Africa. I could take you. But perhaps adventure doesn't appeal to you. It's a challenge. Don't you realize it's absurd? Impossible. That's why you think I might do it? You oughtn't to tempt me. When can we go? Now. Now? Hey. How can we get out? Can you climb? I used to. Apple trees. <laughs> You're climbing tonight. A moment. Let me give me your jewelry. Say so.
board? No, no, not at all. Don't they ever bite him? Oh, they do indeed. I suppose the fang is removed or the poison taken out. No, neither. No, he gets the pulled out. Why doesn't it kill him? Well, you see that boy, the assistant? Every day he takes his dose of snake bite. Starting with a little and gradually increasing the dose until one day he'll be immune, too, like his father. Well, evidently it's possible to become accustomed to anything, even snake bite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mustn't laugh. For the honorable profession, handed down from father to son over hundreds of years, doesn't make it tired, just uh, fighting without any success. <laughs> <laughs> He's bored stiff with it. Look, look, look at that expression. The snake's on you. He's saying, don't you ever feel anything, you idiot? Don't you ever die? <laughs> I think we'd better say goodnight here. Thank you for showing me Africa. It's been thrilling. You don't think that was the real Africa, do you? You said what? Did I? Oh, no, no, no. That's the real Africa out there in the desert. The Maibu Oasis. At full moon. Maibu? That sounds lovely. It's only three miles out. You would almost see it from your balcony. Come now. Are you trying to tempt me again? Yes. Are you tempted? Especially. It's impossible. Quite impossible. I'm afraid so. Good night, Sergeant. Good night, my lady. Lady Manita! Haven't you forgotten something? Oh, yes. Yes, my jewelry. Pity I mentioned it. I nearly got away with it. <laughs> Don't you think a poor soldier should be rewarded for his honesty? Now put the necklace on. Can't you do it? I nearly did. There. Thank you. Forgive my being so clumsy. It's a long time since I fastened the woman's necklace. Good night again. Good night. Someone gave him some work to do. He sent me a message. I don't care why he didn't come, but he didn't come. Uh, ah! <laughs> hey, cigarette! You owe me money. You didn't pay. I should have known better, old fellow. Let's go home, eh? You 
came after all. You knew I would. Aren't you going to show me the rest of your Africa? Tell you one. This was once an old monastery, perhaps the most famous monastery in all Africa. It is said that no woman but one ever set foot on this holy ground. <laughs> you're, you're not listening. I'd rather hear another story. You're alone. Oh, my story is much too long and much too dull to tell you. Not dull, I'm sure. Well, perhaps it's not so dull. But it hasn't seemed long until... Now. Now? After this, it will be endless. Ah, you see, the old trick. I'm playing on your sympathy. Will it really seem endless? Let me ride back alone. Sidi Ben Habadou, Lord Sarah. Colonel Farley. Won't you? Thank you. Your presence here is most opportune, Lord Sarah. You understand, of course, that I'm here merely as an observer for the British government. For some time, we've been having trouble with a powerful chief, Sidi Ben Yusuf. Ben Hamadou is one of our few loyal chiefs. He himself wants our help. He wants to continue in peace and prosperity. But his own tribes are already wavering in favor of Sidi Ben Yusuf. And if they join with him, then he must break with us. Naturally. I have repeatedly assured him that the rumors of trouble between France and England are lies, but if you will add your word. Certainly. Interpreter. Tell Chief Ben Hamadou that the friendship between France and England continues, and that they'll mutually support one another in suppressing any revolt against territorial authority. إن الصداقة التي ما بين الدولة الفرنسية والإنجليزية تبقى على حالة. بكل سرور 
So, Shahid Shuyukh, who are you all Chief Hamadou desires to express his gratitude. He will confer immediately with the other chieftains and return tonight with their answer. So that's their answer. Major Doyle. Sir. Excuse us. Stand up. Major Doyle. Yes, sir? I'm giving you a post of great importance. If you succeed, the revolt may be checked. You will move your battalion to Abu Hamad immediately. Your objective is to stop the juncture of Sidi Ben Yusuf's three tribes. Thank you, sir. How soon can you move? I'm in Agra. Very well, then, move. Yes, sir. Who do you think I've seen? I don't know, but he hasn't improved your grammar. No, seriously, sir. I've just seen Lord Seraph. Seraph? Here. Are you sure? Saw him with my own eyes, sir, with that British party at the hotel. You remember the lady that came here one day? That's his niece. His niece? Rake, you must pack for me. But we're marching on out. Can't help it. I've got to get that horse back. I gave it to Lady Venetia. I cut Forrest King on the bed. If Seraph sees that, he'll know. I've got to get it back. Bring my kit. I'll meet you at parade. Yes. Victor. Victor. Hello, cigarette. Where have you been? I have looked everywhere for you. Two nights I waited for you. Why didn't you come? I'm sorry, my dear, but I couldn't. It was the commander, huh? He gave you some special duty. No, no, I, I was detained. Oh. Please forgive me, my dear, I must go. You, you would leave without saying goodbye? No, no, my dear. I was coming to say goodbye before I left. Believe me. Goodbye? Is that all you were going to say to me? Give me. Forgive me, my dear. I must go now. I see you on the parade ground. Every precaution has been taken. I've been buried for a terrible thing. What really is happening? Nothing, nothing at all. If you hadn't come, I should have gone to you. Venetia, there's something I'm going to ask. Very important. It's the horse, the carving. I want you to give it back. Why? It's mine. I love it. Yes, I can't explain, but I must have it back. Will you give it to me, please? Of course, dear. 
But you must promise to let me have it again when you return. Well, you won't be here when I return. You'll be in England. Oh, no. I shall be here, Victor. I can't leave you. Ever. Oh, no, no, please don't speak. I know exactly what you're going to say. And I know nothing of you. Except yourself. That's all I need to know. Oh, my dear, you don't know what you're saying. It's madness. When two people love each other like this, and we do, don't we, Victor? Men part. That's men. Besides, you won't always be a millionaire. Someday your service will end. No, it'll never end. I can never go back to England. I should only be exchanging my service here for... for a prison cell. That's nonsense. Saying that to frighten me because... because you think it's hopeless. But it isn't hopeless. I won't let it be. You can't forget me, Nicola. Can you? No. You want me to wait? Oh, my dear. Now, wait. Anita, my dear. Can I come in? It's my uncle. I, I want you to meet him. No, no, I can't meet him. I must go. Victor! Victor! I shall be here when you come back. I love you, Victor. My darling. Every night in the desert, I'll be thinking of my boo, of you. And I shall be counting the hours until you come back. And you must. Don't let anything happen. Lisa, my dear, where are you? Goodbye. I've got it. My commission has just arrived. I'm a colonel. <laughs> a colonel. <laughs> Don't you see? This is what we planned and waited for. You're crying. What is it? Go and speak. In the name of the saints, what is it? I, I'm crying because you're going away. You're lying. It's that sergeant. You've been different to me since the first day you laid eyes on him. Oh, no, that's not true. Stop lying to me. <laughs> Yes, I am lying. I love
Where did you get this? You are giving me fun. Well, look at the name, Forrest King. That's the model of a horse Rafe Brett gave me. He's in my stables now. Rafe Brett? Yes, he was a young friend of mine. One of the most popular officers in the guard. I haven't seen him for years. He disappeared. Ugly scandal. Man, prison if he'd been caught. Prison? Yes. What has he done? Nothing. He'd been shielding his younger brother. Last summer, his younger brother met up with a nasty accident. Before he died, he cleared Rafe completely. Uncle, this was given to me the other day. The other day? By whom? A man who carved it. A legionnaire, an Englishman. An Englishman, legionnaire? By Jove, where is he now? Well, he's gone. He left with his battalion. We must get him back. I must see him. Can we? Can we at a time like of this? Of course we can. I'll see Colonel Ferrell at once. Sergeant Victor's patrol just came in, sir. They had a brush for the Arabs and lost six men. Did, uh, has, uh, Sergeant Victor come back? Yes, sir. Send him in. Very good, sir. Section patrolled as far as Giardia. Six men lost, five killed, one captured. Well, fill up the gap. Take 20 men and return to Giardia. That position must be held at all costs until the last man. You're going to make sure of me this time, aren't you? What do you mean by that? It's quite apparent, isn't it? You sent me out three times. And like the bad penny, I keep on coming back. It seems to annoy you, doesn't it? Insubordination! You know what that means in the Legion? Oh, death, probably. Ha! Death one way or the other, isn't it? Do you have your orders? Now carry them out! Yes, sir. to have the sergeant killed. Try three times. This time he'll succeed. He sent him to Guardia with 20 men. 20 against 4,000. Mademoiselle. Mademoiselle. Do you happen to know if there's any more wounded to be brought in? If you're looking for Sergeant Victor, you don't need to look anymore. He's not coming back. Wait! Lamzel! What was that you just said? What's happened? Lamzel, tell me, please. I'll tell you. He's been given a post that means death. He'll stay there until he dies. Well, how could you know that? Who told you? I know from the wounded. Now you can go back to your country. You'll never see him again. Why do you speak to me like that? Why? Because I love him like you never could. He doesn't belong with your kind. 
She doesn't believe you. My God. Would you follow them into the desert? Would you march with them, nurse them? I've even shot them so that the Arab could not take them alive. Could you do that? Oh, you poor child. You too love him. Yes, I love him. And I could save him if I wanted to. Save him? How? Oh, in a way, you wouldn't understand. But why should I save him? For you? For me? Well, what difference does it make? Surely you can't leave him out there to die. Can you? Well, can you? Yes, I can! is in the desert, at war. Ah, you must love him very much to go way out there to see him, huh? Cigarette! 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 Take it away. The man just came through from Sergeant Victor's patrol, sir. The post at Yari has surrounded. Yes, yes. Well, uh, bring him in. All right. Tell me, uh, Houston, to report to the commandant. Did uh, Sergeant Victor send this message himself? He was alive, I believe, sir, when the message started. What? Oh, what do you mean by saying that? Nothing. Nothing at all, sir. Oh. Shall I order the battalion ready to move, sir? You will not. The patrol will hold on by themselves. We, uh, we can't move until the shutter is reinforced. But surely, sir, you're not going to leave them out there. That's enough! Sergeant Victor reports, sir, that Sidi Ben Yosef has advanced his main force to the hills behind Giardia. Any casualties? Yes, sir. We lost ten men, sir. Another message I don't understand, sir. He said, tell the commandant that this time the bad penny won't turn up. Who said that? Sergeant Victor, sir. Sort of a code, I think, sir. He said you would understand. That'll do. Do we still say, sir? We do.
going away. That can only mean one thing, who's hung got through. The battalion's on its way. You're right, Sergeant. It's the battalion. They are coming. Well, that's why the Arabs cease firing. They're drawing them into a trap. The whole battalion will be wiped out. Can we do anything to warn them? Yes. Yeah. Turn next. He's the only man in the Legion could have done it. Thanks. Orders from battalion. Our objective is the area. As soon as it gets dark, the battalion will march in extended order. The 14th company take advance guard and the 17th the rear. The post must be reached and held at all costs. Look! More of them! They're at them again!
They can hold out until dark. They may have a chance. John, take the other wall. Keep a sharp lookout. All right, Sergeant. How do you feel, sir? I'm all right. What's our strength? Mm, there's 55 men still on their feet, sir. Food and water for 48 hours, but the ammunition is very low. I see. One more attack and we're done for, huh? Scout below. Well, what did you learn? I scouted to the end of the defile, sir. City Ben Yusuf's main force is withdrawn. Evidently to wait for daylight. Very good, Sergeant. Now wait. Lieutenant Patain, both double centers. Very good, sir. Sit down. So the bad pen is still in circulation. <laughs> still in circulation. Why did you take cigarette from me? Cigarette? Yes, cigarette. She loves you. She told me so. So that's why you tried to exterminate me. No, you're wrong, Colonel. There is someone. It isn't cigarette. You're lying, blast you. Now, what difference does it make? We're both the dead tomorrow. Yeah, we will that. We can only hold out until midday. Dawn or midday, they've got us. What does it matter? Matter? There's four squadrons of chasseurs on the way. They could reach us by noon. By noon? Yes, it's time we need. Perhaps I could... Perhaps I could give you that time. You? How? We can't spare any men. Well, I wouldn't need any men. I'd have to do this myself. That is, uh, with your permission. Well, you have it. If I don't come back, your score is settled. What's in the wind? I can't tell you, Rake, but there won't be any patty de foie gras this time. Open up. A pleasure to renew an old acquaintance, Sidi Ben Yusuf. Your men have been most helpful. Old acquaintance? I don't recall your face. Rafe Brett, Oxford, class of 92, same year as yourself. You were at Balliol, I was at Magdalen. Surely you haven't forgotten Professor York's tea. Professor York? Professor York's tea. Oh, how well I remember. <laughs> but this is amusing. Old classmates meeting here in the heart of the desert as enemies. Won't you sit down? May I offer you refreshments? Thank you. Kahwa. And now, why have you paid me this uh, most unusual visit? To save my life, and possibly yours. I believe there's an old Arab proverb which says, a wise man is he who makes peace in time. Peace. Recently, a British commissioner arrived at Abishe. As no doubt your spies have already informed you. Yes, uh, I heard of his lordship's arrival. So sorry that I wasn't there to receive him. Uh, but what has this to do with the necessity for my making peace? If you were caught here with the British behind you, that would be a bit awkward, wouldn't it? 
British troops in French territory? That's absurd. The secret has been well kept. <laughs> you suppose me naive enough to believe that? You have your scouts. Send them out. Learn for yourself. If what you have told me is true, I shall be indebted to you for the rest of my life. If not, this renewal of our acquaintance, I'm afraid, shall be short-lived. We shall know in a few hours. Hizab, Bahasal Akbar, Anil Afkar. Amrak Yatiri. And now, uh, shall we imagine we're again at one of Professor York's teas? Gyaria! The battalion is at Gyaria! They're surrounded! Gyaria! A change in order! To Gyaria! Polly! You saw the hotel king now. That's good, I cut it. I trust you slept well. Very well, thanks. And enjoyed your morning meal. Uh -huh. It was a great relief after hard tack. I'm very glad since it will be your last. You lied to me. I've had my scouts out all night. There are no British within 500 miles, and you knew it. Quite. I was very amused you believed it at all. Really? And now I can amuse myself with you. Well, that's natural. What can I expect? Remember the old soccer game? Played with the ball. We're going to play it now, but on horseback. <laughs> and you will be the ball. It's a hoo-hoo for your father. She said, the English lady, 
said, if I loved you, I would save you. Tell her I tried. I'll tell her, my dear. Is the pain... No. Nothing when you hold me. Funny. When I waited for you, you didn't come. Now you have come. We are assembled here to do honor to a soldier of France killed in action against the enemy. In life, she was the devoted friend, nurse, and companion to the men of the Foreign Legion. And by her last heroic deed, she saved the remnants of our 5th Battalion and prevented a revolt of the Arab tribes. In the annals of all brave women, the name of Mademoiselle Cigarette will hereafter be given high rank. In the hearts of the French Foreign Legion, she will live forever. In behalf of the government of France, I hereby confer upon Mademoiselle Cigarette the Bédaille Militaire. <laughs>